Okay, Russ, so it's live on Get Set Up. I'm making you a host back so that you can make me a co-host. Okay. For the session also. Good. I will do that. Yeah, your host now. And I'm giving you a message in chat. Starting to be the old gang. Yeah. Good morning, Melinda. How are you? I recognize that voice anywhere. <laughs> it's not a great voice. Oh, it's a nice voice. Very recognizable. The only one I have. <laughs> yeah, same thing I say. Hi, John. How are you? Good to see great. you. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Well, how are you? I'm well. Hi, Jody, Beverly, Martha, Jane. I just came from another class. That's why of uh, Lee's getting your affairs in order class. I highly recommend it. it, it it's he is really, of course, Lee's your really? work, but he's, he's it's an excellent class. That is a really the opposite good class. end of traveling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, but if it, you're going to travel a lot it, and you're older, make sure you have your affairs in order. I don't want to scare anybody, but my, no my, kidding. My, when my wife and I went abroad in 2016 together, not the, for the first time, we suddenly dawned on us, we better write a will. Because <laughs> <If some, laughs> our youngest son was still, uh, had just graduated from high school. So we thought, we better write a will. Well, it, it wasn't just the will, but it was mostly how to organize all your seven homes so that when the person comes in and needs to find all this stuff. Well, that's you what we did then too. On a computer with... and where it can be shared electronically and quickly. So yep. that someone literally doesn't have to come into your house or, or anyway. But anyway, that, that, um, well, speaking of, I tell you, I had a scare as far as traveling alone. I went to Italy. My last trip was to Italy in October, 2019, right before COVID hit. And I, fell back off a chair and broke a wrist. And fortunately I was traveling with my brother and sister-in-law had joined me, although I was supposed to stay on another two weeks after they left, but I had to cancel the trip and fly out because needless to say with a broken wrist, I couldn't drive a ship yeah. rental car and get around. And so it was a little eye opening because I normally travel alone. It's like, Oh my God, you know, what if, you know, I had to have my sister-in-law actually literally help me zip up my pants anytime I went to the restroom. So it was pretty helpless for a while. Well, so I've, it does I've, make you rethink. I've got a story about that. I won't share it today, but now you just remind me one I'll share in a different class about somebody had an accident while they were traveling. I'm just going to keep uh, welcoming people because we've got lots of, of new faces for me this morning. I'm really glad to have you. I see, I'm seeing Sally and Nancy and Thomas uh and some that are familiar i think jody and hi arnita and larita and cornell what a nice name beverly martha joanne dania many of you familiar some of you new welcome everybody i'm glad to have everyone this morning 
Eva, you've got quite a collection of photos on your wall. I like that. I'm a photographer. If you could see it on my over to my right, going down our hallway to our dining room, we have a, a rogues gallery of over 40 shots. They're all family. It's just a you can relate. You know, same here, family. Yes. Just just family, and we redid it recently. We added about. I don't know. I don't know how many we added. Five or ten. It took my wife and me a month between uh, picking out the pictures, getting the right You're frames, right. deciding who to put up, what to not put up, and um, part of it was we when our kids started getting married, we decided we would add a wedding photo to the wall for each one. And then we realized that we had a son and daughter in law that had been married ten years, and their wedding photo wasn't on the wall. So we had to go back and retrieve that one. They had great shots. We see them all the time. So they live in town, so we didn't really think about it. But um, it, we have a lot of fun. I have actually. Uh, um, we have seven generations of my family on the wall because I have my wow. uh, great great grandparents uh, with the name Eans are up there, and um, down to my grandchildren. So that's seven generations, and uh, well, I feel fortunate to have photos from oh, seven lovely. generations. Yes. A lot of people don't have that, and yes. so uh, I'm a photographer. My dad's a photographer. Um, we have some great and unique shots, so I, I really enjoy it. it. It was a lot of fun for me to put them up. Welcome, everybody. Got a few more people joining us. Great to have you all on. Deb, I see, is a new name. And let's see, Maria has just joined us. And if I missed anyone, please forgive me. I'm glad to have you all. Do me a favor. if you While we're waiting just one or two more minutes for anyone else that might join before I begin, uh, if you could put in the chat two things, where you're from, uh, your name will go in the chat, so you don't have to add your name. Where are you from, and um, what, uh, like, where you might like to travel this year? So, like, it's like, I want to go to the Grand Canyon. I want to go to the Upper Peninsula, of Michigan. I want to go to New Zealand or whatever. Just put that in there. So I, I'm just curious what travel dreams people have. Maybe you won't get there this year. I got travel dreams that I don't think I'm going to make this year. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm just holding very lightly any plans to leave the country, kind of doubting I'm going to do it, uh, but just holding them lightly. Uh, so just put those things in the chat. It'd be fun to see what, what people are wanting to do. i um, got lots of great classes on travel this week. In fact, this is the first week where I have a full contingent, um, We even without Rick Steves, of travel classes. Uh, we've got uh looks like 13 classes on travel planned for this week so including a great one this evening with um frank and joanne collar who are going to share with us about their trip to cuba in 2019 so they were one of those folks who got out of the country on a trip just before months before the pandemic shut all that down so they've they've got a a, a great a show for us tonight i call it show plan description <laughs> presentation So let me just, wow, we got lots of responses in the chat. Let me see what we have here. Um, oh, by the way, I want to introduce Victor, our TA. Great to have our TA with us this morning. He helps just uh, manage things in the background. And I really love having TAs. Thanks to Victor. If you got questions, problems, issues with anything from something you can't find on the website to a problem with your finding the chat, I guess I can't tell you to put the question in chat if you can't find the chat, so that's kind of pointless. But other questions, tech questions, uh, you can chat, send a chat message to Victor. I'll see if he can help you out in the background while the class is going on. Um, also, sometimes question learners ask questions like, how do I find this or that thing on the website? And our TAs are great. They can often put the link in the chat. So. Um, and he has, yes, he has requested, if possible, if you're not speaking, just stay on mute. I do encourage and appreciate participation, but if you're not, if you're not saying anything at the moment, please just put yourself on chat. Let's see. Thomas is, is from Washington, DC. Great. Thomas, you're having weather like me today. I'm in, uh, you'll find out as I introduce myself, I'm from Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is the Shenandoah Valley. We have similar weather, uh, right now it's moist. <laughs> which I'm glad for. We had heat over the weekend. I planted my garden and uh, it's perfect for some moist weather for a few days while everything takes root. 
Uh, Nancy is from New New Hampshire, and she wants to travel to New Mexico. Ooh, that sounds nice. I've been to New Mexico. Uh, Danny is from Cincinnati, Cincinnati. She wants to go to Scotland. You and me both. I love Scotland. Oh, this is just killing me. John is from Gross Isle, Michigan. He wants to go to Southwest France. Me too. <laughs> I can't get to all these places. Uh, uh, Thomas wants to go to San Francisco. That's nice. A wonderful place. <clears throat> Lawrence is going to Alaska in June and Maui in February of next year. Wow. Alaska in June. Those will be long days. Uh, Larita is from Charlotte, and she wants to go to Venice. <clears throat> Aha. I understand that. Um, Deb is from Michigan. She wants to go to New England, Maine, Quebec, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, <laughs> Newfoundland, and someday Scotland and Orkney Islands. Ooh, you and me and the Orkney Islands. Uh, I was within sight of them in 2018 when I was in John O'Groats and we could see them, I don't know, they're 10, 15 miles across the open sea. And I would like to go to the Orkneys and see Scarabray. Um, but it sounds like New England, Maine, and Quebec are quite doable. I'm actually hoping to get up to Maine this summer. I got a son that, son that lives there. Melinda's from St. Augustine, Florida, and she would like to go back to Scotland and Tuscany. I can understand that. Oh, and, Be and Deb wants to go to Belgium, too. I haven't been there. I'd like to go to Belgium. Uh, Beverly is from Florida, and she wants to take a cruise to Alaska. So talk to, uh, let's see, Sally. She's going to she's going in Alaska. Maybe she's on one of those cruises. My sister's done the Alaskan cruise. Uh, Arnita is from Rocket City, which must be Houston, right? And she wants to go to Huntsville. Okay, I'd like to go to Huntsville too, actually. Uh, Joanne's from Horseshoe Bay, Texas. She's going to Pittsburgh. Hey, one of my favorite cities. I love Pittsburgh. Make sure you go down to the point. Go to Better to Boco for a meal and also Permanti Brothers, unless you're a vegetarian, in which case don't go to Permanti Brothers. Um, and make sure you get up to Grandview because Pittsburgh has probably the most fabulous city view in North America. You get up on Grandview, which is on the south side of the Monongahela Rivers, and you get just a fabulous view of the whole city. Uh, if you come to my uh, Rails to Trails adventure tomorrow evening at seven o'clock, I'll show you a picture of Pittsburgh from Grandview. Uh, Jennifer's from the Bronx, wants to go to Singapore. Oh, that's nice. And Arnita wants to go to Hawaii, I'll bet. Uh, <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. Uh, Martha's from Michigan. She wants to visit national parks. Good. Do you know about the senior pass? Uh, anybody? I think it's 62 and older. You can get a senior pass. I got mine. 80 bucks. It's a bargain. Lifetime. A lot of us were complaining because it used to be 25 bucks, or a lot of people were complaining when it went from 25 bucks up to 80. Do not complain. That is a bargain. A lifetime pass to the national parks for 80 bucks. You got it. Oh, Jody wants to go to New Zealand. Hey, I want to go there sometime. I think I want to go to New Zealand when it's winter here and summer there. And uh, oh, I see. Our need to means Rocket City is in Huntsville. Pardon my ignorance. I thought Rocket City was maybe Houston because, well, I, I guess you could might understand that. That's where Mission Control always used to be. I didn't know that Huntsville. Okay, Arne Arnita, please explain to me how Huntsville became Rocket City. I really got to know this. You go ahead and take yourself off mute. It's where NASA is. NASA and the, uh, the Redstone Arsenal is in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, I did. Is, so is NASA headquartered in Huntsville now? Yes. Oh, that's a change because they used to be Houston, right? Or was it always uh, Huntsville? Well, now Houston, because that's where Houston also, because that's where the teacher died. Okay. I think Mission Control is in Houston, but headquarters is in Huntsville. Okay. Huntsville. Well, there's a lot my... of rockets built in. I mean, there's a lot of engineering going on in Huntsville, and Huntsville for okay. a long time always has been. Huntsville is also where my grandma, my grandmother's buried. Never been there. I need to go someday. I didn't know that grandmother very well, but someday get. I need to get down to uh, Huntsville. Well, she lived with me even when I was a little kid, but she died when I was ten, and I didn't know her very well. But my other grandparents, I did know very well. Great to have everybody here today. This is uh, there's a lot of talk and buzz in the news on travel, and I'm going to get to slow travel here in a second. But I was just, I, I get the Washington Post on Sundays. I have an online um, electronic 
um, subscription and I get the, 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 the printed paper on Sunday. So actually on Sundays, I try not to look at a computer screen or my phone and I read the paper and do stuff outside. So, uh, some people are admonishing me Monday morning. I didn't check my email over the weekend. I have to explain, I was taking a screen vacation for a day, but there was, there's just so much in the news about travel. And, uh, I, I will try if, to remember to link an article that was in yesterday's Washington Post, which was a Q and A about travel, and um, there there were I mean there were all sorts of stuff, kind of inadvertently about travel. They weren't in the travel section of the post. One was about uh, and this totally caught me by surprise, is that the cost of rental cars is soaring. Anybody else know about that or see that story? That one that one kind of shocked me. I was gonna. I'm hoping to get up to uh, to Maine for a long weekend in June to see my son and daughter-in-law and grandson, and uh, we were going to rent a car from Portland to Lewiston, Maine. It's only like a 45-minute drive. Oh, the cost of the rental car was almost as much as the airline ticket. So I'm thinking about maybe just a limo from the airport up to Lewiston. That'd be cheaper. Um, I would say rental car prices tripled. Um, and also in the story, they were talking about how they're just – Getting a car is hard, uh, and I didn't know this, but Hertz filed for bankruptcy last year. I thought I was paying attention to everything in the news that was going on in the pandemic. I guess there was a lot of news, and uh, I missed that one. Hertz filed for bankruptcy. You know, they were they were number one, and in case you didn't know it, and um, that there the rental car companies all sold up to a third of their rental cars, and then they canceled car orders for new cars. So. Um, if you're thinking of going somewhere and renting a car, check that out now because I was shocked when I looked at the cost of a rental car. I mean, I, I'm one of those people that's used to like $29 a day or $19 a day rental, car rentals, you know, for a long weekend. We're looking at $80 a day for a long weekend. So, um, or, and then big fees on top of it. So the, and the other one is, is just, um, uh, and I actually want to do a class on this. If you're interested in this class, raise your hand, either just raise it or do a virtual hand. I'd like to do a class on on uh, where you can travel in 2021. Um, if you're interested, let me know because like, oh, sorry, and, and where to find information about where you can travel. So I may put it that way, where to find information about where to travel because a lot of us get very confused. I'm the moderator of a very large, uh, well, I'm, I'm on a lot of, uh, Facebook groups that are travel oriented or hiking or walking active. And, um, there's a lot of speculation and people post opinions and speculation online. It's really not helpful. We try to say only post information that's like factual. It's in the news, actually in the news, or it's, it's, um, you know, government and it changes everybody. We all know that the, the story changes. So that's just, probably the number one thing to learn in the class is it's going to change. But there are places you can go that keep the information updated regularly. Uh, the good news is within the U.S. there are no travel restrictions, but unless someone can correct me here, I think they're saying there's a mask mandate on airplanes through September, which means it could last longer than that. So, um, and there's nothing up, up, no information yet about things like, like, like vaccine passports, you know, the, anyway, I'm going to do a class probably in about two weeks covering that. It'll probably be a regular monthly class where we'll update travel information, where you can find stuff and what, and what we know. So that's coming. Uh, there's apparently, and I'm, and based on what I'm seeing your hands raised here, looks like there's already an interest in that. So, uh, Thank you, everybody who uh, responded. I think we'll do that class. Did you have a, uh, anybody have a question about that or want to make a comment before I move into today's class? Uh, by the way, if you have more questions or um, about anything today, please put them in the chat. We'll come to those. I may also pause at some point and ask somebody if they want to uh, share about an experience. But we'll we'll all circle, we'll always circle back and we'll we'll share about what we'll with each other some of our experience based on what I show you today. So I'm going to share my screen today about travel. Does everybody see something that says slow travel? Okay, got not good. Uh, I'm really glad to see that slow travel, spend less, but have a richer experience. This was actually, uh, an idea that came to me right away when I was asked to talk about travel for get set up. And, uh, my wife and I, uh, have traveled a lot around the U S but also, 
starting, oh, a little bit, a couple of decades ago, but picking up steam in the last 10 years, uh, doing much more international travel that's two to three times a year. Um, and we hit upon this thing that we just call slow travel. Um, and there's, there's probably a book about it. It's probably a name someone has coined. So I don't, it didn't come from me originally, but for us, it's very similar to things like the slow move, slow food movement. If you're familiar with that, uh, the idea is spend less, but have a richer experience. And, this is a concept that my wife and I uh, hit on, and the, actually, so she kind of helped me prepare this class because uh, I, I said, what, what, "What would you think about?" Well, she gave me a whole bunch of the ideas and and uh, what she thinks about with slow travel. So we're hoping to get back into more of that slow travel. This, by the way, is a photo from an Irish pub musicians, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Irish pub musicians later if you want any hints about where to go hear some authentic uh, Irish musician music. I'm your guide, Russ Eanes. I'm from Harrisonburg, Virginia. I'm a writer, a walker, and a cyclist. Uh, I formerly was a book publisher, and when I was a publisher, my favorite thing to do, a uh, favorite part of my job was to help authors shape their ideas into a book, and I loved when we handed an author a finished book. Anyway, you know, we started talking about it two years ago, and here's the book today. Isn't that wonderful? Um, I'm now a full-time guide with Get Set Up, and uh, that's because I love all the energy and the wisdom I collect from working with older learners. I'm also an avid traveler. Uh, like I said, I've been abroad a number of uh, uh, 16, 16 trips abroad, a uh, total of about six months. I know some of you are much more experienced than me. Um, I didn't really start getting into it a lot until my family had grown up, which you can probably understand. I have six children and the last one just graduated from college last year. So there were a few other financial and time priorities. But uh, when we could, we squeezed, my wife and I always squeezed in travel. Plus, we've been to a lot of places with our kids. Probably the family's favorite place to travel together is uh, Stanley, Idaho. And if anybody here knows Stanley, Idaho, that's in the Sawtooth Mountains. Uh, Stanley population 99 when my family showed up. The population of the town went up almost 10%. Uh, Get Set Up helps you learn useful skills from people like you. So you can do wonderful things. Uh, we learn from each other. Ideally, we can see you and your cameras are on. You can request a recording after class of this class. You can email help at getsetup.io and they'll send you a link to the recording of the class. If anyone is joining by live streaming, and by the way, we are live streaming today, I just encourage you, the best way to participate is to join and register for a class, and you get to ask questions or give input on your experience. Lastly, Get Setup's not paid to promote any specific products. Our agenda today, we're gonna, I'm going to give you my definition of slow travel. We'll all list and discuss some elements of slow travel, and we'll talk about hopes for the future of travel. And you've all given me a lot of your hopes for the future of travel this year. That's exciting. And we'll share about some of our experiences of slow travel. So anything that I share with you today, if you're like, yeah, I've done that, well, let's tell everyone else about it. Uh, here's what I call slow travel. It is an experience, not a consumer item. It means immersing in a culture, learning its cuisine, customs, history, whatever else makes that culture unique. It means having a sense of wonder and being open to whatever comes along. That's a picture of a uh, vegan restaurant I found in a market hall in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I'm mostly vegetarian, so to find a uh, place in Germany that serves some outstanding food, and there's a lot of people in Europe that eat this way, uh, they kind of felt like traditional culture was I, was, a, was a fun experience. Well, number one, uh, first idea about slow travel that I have is uh, something that if you know Rick Steves, it's very much like Rick Steves, live like a local. Uh, and Or he calls it become a temporary local. And so my wife and I have taken in recent years to renting an apartment or a room. Uh, we've done tours, our, our self-planned tours. We've driven around a country or a place for a couple of weeks, either the UK or Germany or Ireland. But starting in 2016, we said, you know, let's start going somewhere and spend a whole week there and see what we can learn from that week there. So we would started by, we started rent by renting an apartment or room. Um, and a guest apartment is like we have the whole place to ourselves. A uh, room is um, 
we're in a home that someone is maybe renting out rooms and we always want a place that where we have access to the kitchen that's important to us for some of the points two and three of living like a local uh, we like to shop in a local grocery store uh, we find that fun this is the chocolate section in an aldi's in I think this is in Scotland. I'm not sure. They are actually the Aldi's in Scotland, Germany, France, they all look the same in terms of the chocolate section, which is a lot because my wife considers chocolate to be one of the five major food groups. And uh, they have a lot of chocolate in Europe, even though chocolate didn't originate in Europe. Did you all know that chocolate originated in Central America? Uh, if you didn't know that, you'll come to our class uh, the next couple of weeks where I'll be talking more about Latin America and the cuisines in Latin America. And one of them is about chocolate. Uh, but we love to go shop in the gro local grocery store. I mean, we also like to shop in local markets. I should say that. And I'll talk more about local markets later. But we just like to see, you know, when they go in their grocery store, what does it look like? Uh, what do they have in there? And like I said, they have a bigger chocolate section than we do in most grocery stores, and it's cheaper. Um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, one of our favorite experiences when we were in Scotland, we rented a, a room in an Airbnb. And uh, we said, we're going to make breakfast and lunch every day, go out to supper in a pub, uh, or maybe not lunch in a pub and fix supper at home later. Uh, but let's go down to the grocery store. So we hopped in the car and drove a couple miles to the, a very large local market, which was a really neat place and uh, just enjoyed picking up different things, seeing how they package their foods. Honestly, I've enjoyed grocery stores that are, that are anywhere but home ever since I was a little kid. We would go on vacation, and I remember clearly um, going to Lake Chautauqua when I was about six with my parents and just being fascinated to go to the grocery store. Who knows why? Uh, rent an apartment, which hopefully has in a kitchen, shop in a local grocery store so that number three, you can make your own meals. That's my third thing about living like a local. This is a meal my wife and I made. We went to the grocery store, got bread, peppers, eggs, cheese, made a really nice breakfast one day, got some great juices out of the section. Just, just love sampling what kinds of things they have, make something like home. Um, Nothing that I was staying in a bed and breakfast or a hotel, but we just like this experience uh, making a little bit homey and it's also cheaper uh, rather than spending seven or eight dollars or seven, eight euros or pounds on a meal somewhere out. We spent, you know, a pound or a dollar. Well, a pound's not a dollar, but you get what I'm know what I'm getting at uh, to make our own meal. And then we had money. Uh, our, our, our philosophy is if you spend less on the trip, you can do more of those trips. So, uh, Anyway, live like a local, and we like to rent an apartment or room, shop in a local grocery store, make our own meals. Uh, we also like to get to know the locals and go where they go. So one advantage of being in an Airbnb or a guest room in a house or staying with a family is uh, they'll give you lots of local tips about what where the locals go and what they like to do. Which restaurants are good? Which ones are not good? Where do you have recommendations? This is a picture of an old um, food market in Madrid. And my wife and I were there in 2018. I spent um, six weeks walking the Camino de Santiago. My wife joined me for the last week and a half. And uh, we stopped, we flew home through Madrid. So we had a, an afternoon and evening in Madrid before an early morning flight home. And we went down the center plaza of Madrid where there's lots of restaurants and tons of tourists. And we had the meal there. And then we walked about four or five blocks, even though they don't have blocks in Madrid, but you get the distance, maybe a third to a half of a mile. And we hit upon this place. This was a local tapas uh, well, it, it, what, we, what used to be a food market still has a food market, but it's more like food stalls where they had all sorts of things to sample and all it was packed with locals. They were all in there for the evening having a drink. And if you know Spain, this is something that the locals do. So you learn in Spain, they have tapas, which is like little appetizers that go with a drink. Sometimes they're free, uh, but sometimes you pay a minimal amount for them because they want you to buy the drink. So you can get a glass of wine or beer, whatever you want. And get some tapas, and actually, you can have you can have enough tapas to fill you up. Uh, but the locals were all in there. We're like, ah, we wish we'd thought about this because if we just 
thought about it a little bit longer, we would have just we would have gone here for supper instead of the the restaurant, which was packed with tourists. Nothing against tourists, but you know sometimes you want to experience what the locals uh, experience and go where they go. So this was uh, a a, fa a fabulous thing I can recommend. And um, when we stayed in guest apartments, if you were in my class last Friday, I talked about a free city tour of Munich and York. Uh, we found out about the free tours from hosts that we stayed with. They said, go down to this place this time, you'll get a free tour of the city. So that's another thing that comes from staying with locals. Another part of slow travel that we like is walking, biking, or taking local transit, which can include subways or buses. And if you go to Europe, for example, um, they have really good mass transit pretty much everywhere. And we like to get a pass if we're going to be using the transit enough, or we just go and get a ticket at the machine where we're going. I think this is a, a the light rail from um, York to Durham. I think we went up to Durham for the day. We just grabbed the, the train. It was 30 minutes or maybe it was 25 minutes to Durham. And in London, we've taken um, subway, but also one of my favorite ways to get around London, for example, if you have the time, and I would encourage you to take the time, uh, at least spend part of your time getting around Lon uh, London in uh, on their double-decker buses. Uh, because so, London, so, Russ, is there is there transportation cheap? It is uh, relatively inexpensive. Let me put it this way. Um, you can walk. That's the cheapest way. Um, but their, their transportation is relatively cheap. And if you're going to be somewhere long enough, and we did this for a week, like in London, you can get a pass that will cover all forms of transit. <laughs> and it might feel expensive, like 25 or 30 pounds, but that allows you unlimited trips. So you can really cover the city. And in a place like London, if you want to cover long distances, let's say you're in an out you know, in the Northeast and you want to get down to Notting Hill or something like that, hop on the tube. You may have to do a couple of changes. Um, their transportation, I would say, is 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 uh, a relatively cheap. And I found the local trains like this one I'm on here not to be very expensive. So um, how does it compare to the U.S.? Well, you know, the U.S., we don't have a lot of transit unless you're in certain large cities. Um our buses, even in the town I'm in, Harrisonburg, which is about 70,000, we do have a local bus. Um, but it is, I would say, comparably cheap. If you go to Switzerland, it's going to be a lot more expensive. Some cities, some countries are less expensive than others. Did that answer your question, Larita, I hope? Yeah. <laughs> I answered it by, by hedging about everything I said with a caution, with a caveat. Usually before you go also, especially in Rick Steves, but online, you can find out what the passes go for and what a normal, a, a lot depends on how long you're going to be there, whether or not pass is worth it. But like you said, if you're going to be there a week and, and especially if it's in a big city like London where distances are too far to walk. So a lot of it's a balancing act as to well, and, and, and also there's passes for various days you can get. Like in London, I'll give an example because I've been there three times and I've used a pass each time. You can get a one-day pass, you can get a three-day pass, or you can get a week's pass. So um, it really depends. I think I haven't, I don't think I've ever had the week's pass because I've never spent a week in London, but I've used the single day or the three-day passes and they're very helpful because I you can London get it. also has what they call the oyster pass, which is what the and that is a case of where you load up a car with 10, 15 pounds worth. And then it just, depending on how much you use, it just deducts it. You know? that's, that's a very good point, Melinda. And I actually have two Oyster cards. Um, and then and you can exactly save it for when you go back. If you they're they're pretty them. old and you can save it. Exactly right. I've even lent it to people. I said, just please bring it back. That's all. Uh, um, and I don't really, I don't keep a lot on it, but I keep enough on it. And Linda's right that, that a lot of cities have something similar to that. I think I've got one of those cards from Madrid. Um, I've got a card like that for Washington, D.C. I do because I, I'm close enough. I, I'll often drive up to the closest station to where I live on the Washington Metro, which is Vienna, and park a car. You can park free over the weekends, by the way, in Vienna, and I'll take the Metro in um yeah the oyster car is great because you can just add it you can add your trips and and if it all really depends on how much you're going to do 
uh, travel. And the little oyster card costs you something to get the card, but then you have it for as long as it lasts. And I'm pretty sure that the oyster card I have is a replacement card. I was in London and got it in 2008. And I think when I went back in 2012, I uh, used it again. And then when I was there in 2016, uh, I'd have to think about which year. I had to exchange it for a different card, but they just gave me an exchange. So. And in Paris, they also sell them by the, the, the booklet. So you can buy like 10 tickets, 10 metro tickets for like usually the cost of what seven would cost if you bought them individually. And then if you don't use them all, you know, you can keep them and, you know, you might have three or four metro tickets for when you go back to Paris. That's right. It's and, actually, if you go someplace more than once, it's nice to have the stuff you need when you arrive, which is why I like the Oyster card, because I've got it. And uh, I know what I know. I was there in 2018. I When I, I biked across the UK, I landed in London, spent a half a day in London while I was waiting for my riding, riding partner to, to catch up with me. We took the train together out to Penzance and uh, I had my oyster card. I actually gave him one and I had one and uh, I just put some enough on it to get from the airport on the, on the subway to the center of London. By the way, in many countries, the buses run into rural areas, very different than in the U.S. A couple of experiences I had, actually I can think of three of them, where I've gotten on rural buses to take transport. Uh, when my son and I were in York in 2012, we decided to go up to Hadrian's Wall to hike, and it's it's not it's about oh I don't know 75 miles or 100, maybe 100 miles from York, and we hopped on the train from York to Newcastle, and that was a higher speed train. Then we got the local train that goes. Uh, coast to coast. So it, it starts in Newcastle and goes all the way to the other side to Carlisle, got off in the town of Hexham. And in Hexham, I had done the research ahead of time. There was a local bus that ran out to Hadrian's Wall because Hadrian's Wall isn't in town. And it was maybe four or five miles. Uh, same thing we did in, in Germany in 2015, uh, 2016. My wife and I were in uh, Frankfurt together. I was there uh, for my work. And we decided to go to a monastery out in the country near Mainz. And, uh, well, actually, we had to take the train to a couple towns. And then we just took a rural bus out in the countryside, three or four miles, to this old monastery that was a uh, winery and a vine had vineyards. So uh, that, that if, you, if you're going to a place like that, it's a different shift. Actually, it's also true to my experience in, such, in Latin America. I've been twice to Colombia, and the local buses run all over the place in some of the rural areas in Colombia as well, and between small towns. So if you're an American, it's a, it's, a shift, it's a shift of mind. But it's really nice because it's less expensive, and it can be quite an experience. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law, my wife and I, traveled uh, in, in Colombia in 20. 13, uh, 2014, and we went um, from one town to another place. It was about 150 miles away in the back of a 15-passenger van that stopped frequently to pick up people by the side of the road. Very different experience in America. It's a good experience for us. Another tip um, about another aspect, what I call lo slow travel, learning how the locals live, is learn the local market days in cities or towns. So learn this do a little research in advance. Find out when is the market day. This is one of my favorite markets. It's in the city of Mainz, Germany, which is about 20 minutes from Frankfurt. And I had researched this, and I found out that Tuesday is always their market day. So I've been to Frankfurt three times for work. I always made carved out time to get over to Mainz on Tuesdays to experience their market. It's huge. It fills the plaza, and there's everything from uh, fruit and uh vegetable stalls for the locals to pick up their fresh produce, to uh, crafts and to bottles of wine, because that's in the Rhine Valley where they do a lot of uh, wine making. Uh, everything was available, and I just enjoyed walking through the market and seeing the color and what was available. Again, I'm mixing up with the locals. Yeah, there were a few tourists there, uh, but it's where the locals go every Tuesday to get everything they need for the week. Another uh, tip about slow travel is is to uh, find out if there's a city tour that's free. Uh, those are often fun because in the free city tours, you get quite a mixture of people. Uh, if you were in my class last week, this was the one that I did in York. We're looking at the medieval portcullis, which covered the gate, and our colorful uh, 
York City Guide. Uh, this was where we found out from our host in the guest house in which we stayed. But after that, we said, you know, we're going to Munich in October. Let's find out if there's a free tour in uh, this free city tour in Munich. And sure enough, we got there in Munich and just at, we were staying in a hotel for three days in Munich. And uh, we asked the person at the front desk, is there a free city tour? Oh, yeah, there is. And he told us to go over to Marian Platz at uh, 1030 this morning. And there's a nice two hour tour of the city. And it's in all in English. So it's, you know, it's geared toward people who speak English. Uh, so go take that. And we've done this kind of thing, not just um, in cities. We've also done free tours uh, in the countryside. I mean, we, one of our favorite ones was a walk uh, from the town of Doolin to the Cliffs of Moore, which is about five miles along the coast with a local who told us everything about uh, he could think of on that walk about the local area. It was a lot of fun. Probably do a class on that someday. Russ, um, on free tours, though, you are you really do need to tip the guy. Well, I, I explain this in our in our class. Yes, uh, they're free, meaning there's no cost up front. I always recommend giving a tip. My wife and I like to tip generously because for many of these folks, it's part of their their living. So we'll give you know five euros, ten euros uh, per person, depending on how long the tour was, uh, how many people are in the tour, um, and. And sometimes they'll recommend it. They'll say, hey, you know, this was fun. I appreciate it. There was no charge for this. You know, if you can give me five or 10 euros, it's nice. Or, or someone might recommend that. Uh, yes, definitely don't stiff people. Uh, if you're a foreigner traveling there, you can afford it. I've uh, been a guide, so I know. <laughs> there you go, Melinda. Thank you. I have had some free tours uh, a couple of times, believe it or not, where I've had people who were city guides who happened to be friends of the folks we we're visiting and said, we're going to take in a tour of the city tonight. I did that in Hamburg and also in Bonn, where we just had a, a guy and a woman who'd been who'd been city guides there in their past. So we didn't tip them, but that was just a, being with family. Um, an, another thing to, to do, though, is if there's something unique about the culture and there is a tour about that, we'll take that tour. This is uh, actually them. Sh uh, this is a uh, a distillery tour. My son and I, my oldest son and I, visited Scotland uh, together in twenty six in twenty seventeen, and um, he, we he said we we've, we've got to go take a you know Scotch is big in Scotland. We got to find out about that. So we we found uh, every distillery around there gives a tour, and we went and took that cost. You know, there's an admission charge to that, a nominal. But they give you a free taste at the end. Of course, they want you to buy a bottle. But there's a guy showing us all the different grains and also the peat that they use. But that's big in the culture. And I discovered why scotch is so different. What is it about whiskey that you get from Scotland? And by the way, uh, spoiler alert, it is the water is the big thing. The, the peat also, but it's especially the water. Uh, has a certain quality to it because it's sort of glacial coming out of the mountains, the springs. And they have a point. It also has to do with how often it's distilled. Yes, yes. Scotch or, is distilled twice, and Irish whiskey is distilled three times, and bourbon right. only distilled once. That's right. Uh, another aspect of slow travel that I recommend for people, you need to do this a bit ahead of time, even in a cursory way, is learn about the history and then take time while you're there to learn about the history. Uh, in 2015, my wife and sister and I went to Ireland. Uh, my sister and I, of course, part Irish. My wife is Fitzgerald, so she's quite Irish. And uh, as part of the tour, we um, were recommended uh, by others. I believe it might have been Rick Stees, but my sister got the recommendation, was to go to a place called Kilmaine in Prison. Kilmaine in Prison is uh, where you'll get the Irish national birth narrative. Uh, and this, where we're looking at where the flag is and where our tour guide is explaining to us is the place where uh, uh, the Irish rebels in the uprising in 1916 all faced a firing squad up against this wall. And the story is that that was, of course, a failed uprising. It took less than a week uh, during the First World War. It was uh, The British captured all the ringleaders or they turned themselves in. And uh, they started executing them. And the public, which had been against the rebellion, actually, after they started executing within a short amount of time, the ringleaders that turned public sentiment the other way, and they turned against the British. And the British decided that wasn't such a good idea. So Kilmaine in prison, though, is a play place where all the Irish rebels who wanted to free Ireland were put by the British for 200 years. And it's kept in its original kind of dank, dirty state when you go through there. And the guide explains everything about 
the desire for centuries for Irish independence and why it was important. And I felt like I came back with a much better sense of Irish history because I'd known a lot of the older history, the Celtic history up to the, say, 10th, 11th, 12th century. Uh, but I knew a little bit less about 20th century Irish history. But after I came back from Ireland, I knew a lot about it. And that visit to Kilmaine in prison was important. Uh, while you're there, experience uh, whatever's going on in the local country. I picked up these two newspapers when I was in Scotland in 2016. My wife and I happened to be in the UK. We didn't plan this, but uh, we were there for the day of the Brexit vote. And um, these are the newspapers from the day after. Uh, we're out, Brexit earthquake. Uh, you all know that the prime minister resigned after the failed uh, vote on Brexit. Uh, was very interesting to me. I was I was there about oh eight or ten days before the vote, and we were there for a week after the vote and experienced everything that was going on across the whole UK. Of course, I was in Scotland the day of the vote on the Brexit, and the Scots voted sixty percent to stay in the EU. So they had quite a different view on uh, whether or not to stay in the EU than people did in other parts of England. Uh, curiously, I po I polled people, just asked them when I met them if. I got to know them well enough to have a conversation, say, hey, you know, what did you think? What do you think about the upcoming vote or afterward? What do you think about the vote? And um, well, it was just interesting. It was a very close vote. Uh, obviously, some people told me I had one interesting conversation with a couple said we're voting to leave because uh, we want to make that as a protest. We don't think that it will win, but we want the government to uh, know we want to register our our unhappiness with the government, and I didn't get a chance to ask them later how they felt about it when they actually succeeded to leave. Of course, we know that took years. But uh, on the day of Brexit vote, we were in Scotland for uh, a week. We stayed near Edinburgh, and uh, we had a car that day, and we took the car up to St. Andrews because I also wanted to, always wanted to see St. Andrews, and we happened to be there the day of the graduation from St. Andrews University. And uh, so there were students all going around the, the streets with their caps and gowns. And I went into a shop to get a pastry. And as I stepped out of the shop, who should I see on the street but this guy right there with the blonde mop? And it was, that's really him. And this woman was asking him some in questions. Why Boris Johnson happened to be in St. Andrews on the day of the Brexit, I don't know, though I ch would say the chances are pretty good he was there because one of his children was graduating from St. Andrews. Didn't know if he had children that old or not, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look it up sometime. But there he was. So you never know if you just live like a local and get into the local things, what you'll find out. That evening, we went back and stayed with our, our host. We were in, a, in an Airbnb, and she was quite distraught. She was Scottish about the vote uh, because they knew by, say, 9 or 10 o'clock that the Brits were going to leave. So we got into the local culture. I got a chance to talk to people about the things that concerned them. Um, real quick, talk about meeting. I happened to be in Dublin at the uh, Vermeer show in um, in Dublin at the art museum, and uh, one of the guards pulled me over and he said, uh, "The fellow over there is the uh, that I was in the room with is president of is uh, Ireland's president." And you know, it was just like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, because in this country, there's no way the president of the country would be visiting a museum at the same time you are without a whole bunch of security. So that was, to me, really interesting. That's right. That's right. It's a whole different whole different thing when you go to a foreign country. Yep, you might just see the foreign leader there. Well, like I said, Boris Johnson wasn't a prime minister yet. He was just a rabble rouser, a backbencher. When I snapped the picture of him, but he was sure famous that day. Uh, anything. Anyway, the last thing is just give yourself enough time. Remember, you can't do it all. It's, it's one thing I've learned in my trips um, is I uh, help me relax inside. Think, you know, I can't do everything. Um, I know in uh, 2015, when my wife and, and sister and I went to Ireland, one of my ambitions that trip was to go to a place called Skellig Michael, which is an old Irish monastery on some islands a few miles off the coast of the peninsula in Kerry. And we really wanted to do it, and then we realized that we were there about two days before the ferry started running. We said, you know what? We'll just come back another time and do it. Or maybe we won't get it all, but maybe we'll never get there, but we sure had a great trip. So measure your the enjoyment of your trip by what you accomplish and not by what you didn't see. So I'm going to stop the share here right now and ask if anybody here wants to share any 
slow travel experiences. Let me ch uh, change uh, check the chat. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sally was in St. Andrews the day Prince William arrived with his father. Well, that's right. That St. Andrews is where uh, Prince William went and he also met his wife, Kate. Wow. Arnita says she found out that Frederick Douglass spent time in Ireland with the famous activist uh, and has special relations with Irish and Ireland. I, I, I can believe that. I can believe that. And it, I, that, that's very interesting to me. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between Irish activists for freedom and uh, the abolition movement. Very, very interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Arnita. I'm, I'm going to look that up a little bit more about Frederick he, Douglass. He also spent quite a bit of time in St. Augustine. So if you're ever in Florida, Douglas has here. Uh, anybody have any slow travel experiences about anything I shared or advice or input? Yeah, Go ahead and raise your down. hand. Maria, yes. Uh, yeah. I've been in, I did the Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Did you do that? Yes. I walked the Camino de Santiago. Um, I've done several, I've shared several times and get set up about that. I'll, I'll do it again and I keep an eye out. Uh, I walked the 500 miles from Saint Jean Pied de Port in uh, Southwest France, which is why I'm saying I'd like to go back to Southwest France, actually it's the Basque region, uh, to Santiago. It took me five weeks to walk it, about 100 miles a week. And I was very happy. To, actually, today's May 3rd, 2018 is the day I arrived in Santiago. It was a picture perfect day to arrive. It was. Uh, I always find early May to be one of the no most beautiful times of the year if you're somewhere temperate where there's a nice spring. I, I have another question. Yes. How do you reserve the apartment or room in, in other places? I mean, it's not the same as Santiago de Compostela. You have a, um, what is it? Um, a, the albergues? Yeah. Yes. Um, for reservations, when I'm making lodging reservations, I use two typical tools. One is booking.com and the other one is Airbnb. And actually there's a class on how to use Airbnb coming up. So look, check the week. Uh, actually, let me just see if that's on the schedule. I think that's going to be in two weeks. So um, the third week in May, I'll do a class on how to use Airbnb. I do have a class tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. Um, is use how to use your mobile phones and online sites to make reservations. So check that one out tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time is a good class where I will be talking about all the various online sites and some of the mobile apps I use. I've also got a class coming up probably in two weeks, how to use your mobile phone when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, but I use Airbnb and Booking. Booking.com specializes in hotels, but let me tell you, you can find um, Actually, Maria, you'll find this interesting. When my wife and I were in Santiago, we stayed three nights and we actually booked a guest apartment that had a kitchen and a, and a washing machine. <laughs> After hand washing my clothes for 30 days, I thought it might be good to put them in the washing machine. Um, because so you, did, you didn't stay in the hostel? We didn't stay in the hostel in Santiago. I stayed in a hostel every night walking across the, the Camino and I loved it. I wouldn't change it for anything, but my wife and I just wanted to have a few days by ourselves in one place with some cooking facilities. Uh, it was kind of quiet and we just enjoyed that for a few days in Santiago. And we found that through booking.com. So we just, uh, we just pay it like a 10, 10 euros for nine. It was like a donation. Yes. We and have uh, along the way, we have restaurants for caminantes. Oh, walkers? Yep, that's right. Yeah, on the Camino, I stayed in albergues, usually about five to eight euros a night, and then I had pilgrim meals. Yeah, keep an eye out for my class on walking the Camino to Santiago. It'll be coming up. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll give that one a repeat. Um, I am doing a class, um, and it's going to be this week on Thursday at 4 p.m. I'll be talking about walking the way of St. Francis in Italy. So 4 p.m. Thursday, uh, there is a pilgrim walk that goes 300 miles from Florence to Rome, very similar to the Camino. Um, and uh, my wife and I walked about 100 miles of that in 2019. Actually, it was the last time I got in an airplane, was flying home from Rome in October of 2019. I haven't flown now in over a year and a half. And uh, I'll share about that. So very similar experience, um, not quite as many people. And Italy is different than Spain, uniquely wonderful. Thank you. 
Any more comments? We're almost out of time. I'll give one more person a chance if they want to ask a question or, or leave a comment. Just check the chat here. Um, Ooh, Sally says this week, the Tulip Festival is ongoing through Sunday in Holland, Michigan. I'll bet that is beautiful. Uh, thanks for giving us that tip. Anybody who's within drive of, of Holland, Michigan, I've actually been there, but not the Tulip Festival time. It's Holland's a beautiful place. Yeah. So I'll just mention a couple classes um, this afternoon at 3.30. I'll be doing one on uh, a pilgrimage to the Holy Isles of the UK and Scotland, Iona and Lindisfarne. And this evening we have a destination class of Cuba and that's Frank and Joanne Kohler will uh, talk to us about their trip there. I've seen it's very interesting. You will enjoy that. Tomorrow, 11, I'll put some of these classes, by the way, in your class notes to you in case you're, I'm going too fast. Um, you, I'm using um, mobile and online, uh, mobile apps and online sites to do your travel planning. Tomorrow evening, I'll be doing again our Rails to Trails adventure, Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C., by bicycle. So Russ, um, if I can ask, where do I find your complete schedule of classes? Yes. You know what? I'm going to take one second and I'll share my screen and I'll okay. see if I can show you that. Okay. Because I know a lot of learners like to know if you go to the Get Set Up site, mm -hmm. and this is the Get Set Up site right here. Let me hit the home page. So this is what you all see when you do see your home page. Um, if you just go up into the search where it says search guides and classes, put in my okay. name, R-U-S-S, -S, it brings, okay. there you go. There's the drop down of all the classes. Okay. And if you pick one, just pick one, let's say that Airbnb class right there, let's pick that one. So now it takes you to the class and you can book it here. And when you mm -hmm. book it, by the way, you can share that class with a friend. Okay. Um, here's everything we cover. And then if you hit about the guide. That's me, C. Russ Eanes. And then if you go mm -hmm. down here, other classes I teach, this is another way to find those classes. So both ways okay. will help you find all those right. classes. So here's all the classes that I have on the schedule. Well, actually, they're even not all on the schedule. Uh, there might be a few more than that. So wow. I'm doing, I'm actually doing 13 classes this week. So, um, oh. and I have some coming up, plenty okay. more classes next week. So I uh, hope that helped, uh, Eva. Yes, thank you. Great. Okay. Well, you've been a great group. I really enjoyed this class this morning and uh, always love talking about travel. And I hope uh, you all reach your travel dreams this year. Um, I'm keeping mine modest so that I can meet the expectations and I won't be discouraged. I'm actually plotting to get on an airplane in June. Haven't made the reservation yet, trying to get all the logistics right. Not, af not afraid to travel on a plane. Uh, I used to fly a lot. I had hundreds of thousands of uh, frequent flyer miles that I had to use up. I still have some to use up, in fact, but uh, just been staying safe. Uh, we all wanted to keep the whole world safe, not just uh, ourselves. So uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. And uh, look for your email. I'll mention some more classes that you might find interest. And also just check the schedule for my name. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Russ. Yes. Bye. I recommended your uh, Rails to Trails um, Pittsburgh to um, Washington. Washington, because my brother's a cyclist, and he happened to say, actually, he said he's taking that rail on in June, meeting a buddy. So hopefully, tell him to come to the class. He can find out and he can ask questions. I, that's what I told him. I said, you're very, you know, very welcoming and um, easy to talk to. So hopefully, right. you'll follow my advice. Thanks, Thanks, Linda. Linda. Where are you planning to go to in June? Where are you flying to? Uh, oh, I, I'm hoping to go to Portland, Maine, Eva. Uh, ah. My th my second oldest son has uh, he he teaches at Bates College, and he and his wife have a one year old that we've only seen one time, oh, and we're nice. anxious to get up there and see them, to help them. They they bought a house, so they're moving. So grandparents are going to come and take care of the baby while they move stuff. <laughs> I have a quick question. I'm yes. just bye bye. Yes. Has anyone ever gone big into diamonds in Arkansas? Are familiar with that? No? Okay. Sorry, Cornell. All right. <laughs> you have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.